on our way to the Pierce Brown signing and we stopped at a little place called Heaven on Earth. Delicious. It's really loud because there's the trucks going by, but welcome to our adventure. But um, it's pretty awesome, so hopefully it's going to be great. I mean, it is going to be great. I know that it is, but we're here with awesome people who love uh, Red Rising, Green Brown, and everything. So super looking forward to it. Um, I'll probably record some and share it soon. Two, three. starts off with the idea of a revolution against a tyrannical regime, right? You have the rising, you have the society. And then we see the shades of gray in between. And part of Darrow's journey in Red Rising is understanding that the golds are human beings and seeing redeeming uh, characteristics within them. And his growth is mirrored and hopefully the reader's growth as well in understanding how layered and morally ambiguous the society is. So ending with Morning Star, you can end on a triumphant note because, of course, you know the revolution uh, destroys the regime, or at least breaks it. But Red Rising, as I said, has never been a binary equation. It's never been black and white, and so it felt dishonest to the overall story to just leave it there. That means soon. <laughs> and I think that the most fun character surprised that surprised me was Victor. I was shocked. I always knew I'd like several. I'd always knew I'd like writing him. And Darrow sometimes weighs me down with his angst. Um, and I'm just like, dude, you're not in Death Cab for Cutie. Just chill. <laughs> My characters have so much work to do in a story that for me, at least, I find, even though if I might love them the most or identify with them the most in a way, like they're, they're seldom, for me, the most fun to write. Because they have to do too much work. No, no, I wouldn't. It sounds horrible. Um, unless it was like a silver living room. Kind of a psycho would dream up that world. <laughs> you should talk. Uh, but I think that uh, Victor surprised me most, and also Ragnar. I so we just listened, and it was amazing. It was so good. So now we're going to be getting in line soon, and we'll hopefully get our book signed. Mine's in a cozy, but it's in here. <laughs> um, yeah, so here we go. like popping in before we head back down uh, down south today. Medford. Um, yeah, Medford. But we're excited, so you'll probably see some footage of us in the bookstore. Buying books. Buy, well, we're Looking buying at books. books. Thinking about buying books. Buying books. Yeah, we'll see. We'll we'll <laughs> Alright, here we go.
car, we survived the Amazon bookstore. Nailed it. It was so hard to leave. Um, we're gonna do we our unbagging, which is not really a thing, but this. So I got this one. This is um, Time Bound, which looks amazing. Looks good. It looks really good. Looks so fantastic. I went ahead and got it. Um, and then Kara got. Um, a madness so discreet, which also sounds amazing. I'm and going a little to creepy. This. Yes. That creepy is good. Then, I'm excited about this one. Yes. Uh, but not Zenith. I almost bought it too, but then I decided I'm going to wait. I may steal her copy. She has more self control than I yeah. do. I have zero chill. It is chill. very pretty. It's very pretty. I like it a lot. So, all in all, it was successful and we had a blast. And now we're going to hit the road heading back south. Bye. Bye. Uh, what am I saying? <laughs> and Souther. Souther. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, oh, I'm totally, to Yeah. <laughs> <Top> to, yeah. <laughs> We're so tired right now. So it's tired. like so <laughs> Say aesthetic again. <laughs> oh my gosh, you're aesthetic. It's just amazing. <laughs> so amazing. Oh, oh my gosh. Do I have a do? Can I do this? <laughs> <laughs> you put that on there, I'll kill you. <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>